Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and to another Q&A video. So let's cue in the questions. Kazuya Darklight asks in regards to the Tab Ultra. So this sounds like if I am not looking for a tablet to mostly just take one note notes on and do day planning, I should probably go with the Air 2 Plus. Well, Air 2 Plus or the Air 2, it's your choice. The difference isn't that big, but um, yeah, if, if you don't care about the a little bit more battery life, you can actually get the same amount of performance and everything exactly the same with the Note Air 2. You save a little bit of weight and you save a little bit of money, so hey ho. Next question is by Thunderbird3694 and, and he or she asks, do you have any plans to review the new iReader Smart Air 2022? Never heard of the device, so let's check it out and see what that is. All right, so it looks like it's like a small scale Note Air of some sort because it's 8 inch. Harta 1200 display, refresh rate is by 22% improved, yada yada, blah blah blah, 6.3 millimeters, 225 grams, 12 gigabytes, 75 hours of usage, and all the $315. Wow, that's a lot, especially <laughs> because you can get other devices for that. So no, no, not really, because uh, it doesn't seem like something that I'm too terribly interested in. I mean, if they send me a review device, then I'll review it, but I to kind of chase this and purchase it and then do it on my own, not really. So it's simply because there's not going to be that much interest in for a device like that, mainly because it apparently is just like for Chinese market and that just automatically makes it like hard to obtain. Uh, you don't know what the uh, updates are gonna be like and things like that. So no, not really something that I'm uh, that I think that I'm gonna be covering unless they send it to me to review. Next question is from Beach Sketch three five three one. Wonder if you can cut and paste into this type of note. We're talking about the Super Note uh, standard notebook versus real time handwriting recognition notebook. So if you can um, copy from this type from a standard note to this one, that would be quite useful. Thanks for the review. Just got my Super Note this week, and your content has been extremely helpful. Glad to hear that and. And um, thank you for watching. Now for this one, I've already uh, written out in a standard notebook something and I copied it to the selection tool. And as you can see there, it is still in the buffer. So that means that I should be able to just paste it here. Let's go. Yes, I can. So I just pasted this content from a standard notebook into an handwriting uh, recognition notebook. And let's see, the handwriting is recognizing and let's see if it's going to normally recognize what we expect it to do. Yes, it can. Can I copy blah, 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 blah. So let's just quickly test out the other way around. Can you copy from here to the standard notebook? Yes, you can. So you can copy the content from one type of notebook to another without any problems. Next question is from Gothic Game regarding the MDO 2022 or 2023. I didn't get what the AMPM thing was. What was it now? Why changed positions? Well, the idea is that uh, for people who are using uh, or working in uh, night shifts or anything like that, that you can start from 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. So depending on what you're choosing. So if your standard work is, let's say, from 8 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m., let's get, or 4 p.m., <laughs> I'm a workaholic, then you just simply scratch out the 
uh, PM or the one that you don't want and it automatically switches so it shows the exact time that you're looking for. So that way the, the whole point is you can't fit 24 lines into this without they're already really, really small. So that was one of the compromises that I went for to actually accommodate and uh, allow users to have more time and more flexibility by simply crossing out which one they are not using. Next question is from Tchibur13. Does anyone know regarding the books platform uh, if there is a way to duplicate a singular file within a library, the library? I have a specific PDF file that I want to duplicate to use with different clients. Thank you. Well, uh, here's the thing. Yes, you can, but you can't be in the library scan mode. So if you're in library scan mode like this, this is that icon on top here. If you tap on it, uh, there, nope, I have to look at it. Yeah, if you tap on it, you will get an option scan or directory mode. You gotta switch to directory mode, locate the file that you want. And for example, here I go, there I am. And then if I do a long press on that one, you will have the option to copy the file and then you can copy it anywhere you want. Next question is from uh, Mr. G, G, G Clyde. Mr. G Clyde. Uh, he asks regarding the books uh, platform, Note Air 2 in this case, can I store all files in a OneDrive account? If so, how do I change the Onyx cloud storage to OneDrive? Well, if you go to settings and then to the accounts, you will see all of the available options that you can actually synchronize too. Now you cannot synchronize all of the files. The only thing that's going to be synchronized are your notes for your library and you can't use OneDrive. You can use OneNote. You can use Evernote, OneNote, uh, Dropbox or some UDAO Cloud Note thing. So no OneDrive. However, you do have an option. Uh, there's a one sync or auto sync or something like that. There's a, there's an app on Google Play that uh, I use it to synchronize my library uh, via uh, that uh, app with the Google Drive. And then that works. And I believe that they have a version of that app that works with OneDrive as well. So in that case, you could synchronize all of your notes with OneNote and all of your library with OneDrive. Next comment, not a question, but a very, very important point and a very important comment, and that's why I wanted to include it here, is from C.S. Anders P. So he says, in regards to the Super Notes uh, 2.6, 2.12, probably it's going to be called 2.7 update with a handwriting recognition, a super important point that I missed to point out. Ah, wrong sentence, but that's fine. So here it is. Thanks for the great review. I want to point out a really great design decision from Rata team. Recognition is completely offline. For example, you don't need Wi-Fi access to use it. This also makes it really stable as everything is done locally. As a device like Supernote is for me a thing to carry around a lot in different environments, it's very nice that, um, that I very rarely need a Wi-Fi connection. Beyond that, I think it works really smooth. And I completely agree. I think that it's a super Super, super awesome decision and a very important point to keep in mind that that handwriting recognition is completely Wi-Fi free, internet free, it's your own, it's local, doesn't get sent anywhere, it's just on your device, your own to keep. Another question is from Christian Zapater2924. Hi there, I've purchased one of these. He's talking about a Books Nova 2 uh, from eBay. It has a screen protector, which seems to be coming away at the top corner. My question is, does this device come with a screen protector from Onyx? Does it need one? Here's the thing. The one that I had when I owned it, I sold it since, um, did, uh, didn't have a, pre a screen protector pre-applied, but it did have a screen protector in the box, right? So you could apply a screen protector if you wanted to, but I do know that some stores at some point for some devices 
they would ship out those devices with screen protectors pre-applied. So I don't know if this is the case that somebody pre-applied a screen protector that was shipping with, or the previous user applied the screen protector that it was shipped with, or maybe some other one. But either way, the whole point is that if you don't need a screen protector and you don't want it, you can safely take it off, especially if it's already peeling off, because the regular uh, surface of the screen on the Nova 2 is a true AG glass. So that's that's that. And here is another comment, not a question, from F. Solis or Solis, and it's in regards to the Kindle Scribe. And he says, I love the notebook experience on my Kindle Scribe because it's very basic. Thank you. Well, I think that that's also a very useful experience and uh, viewpoint to see because I'm absolutely certain that there are going to be people who are going to be okay with the basicness of the Kindle Scribe. And that's fine, that, that's not a problem. But the problem is that that's a very narrow uh, band of people. And also when you compare the functionality of the Kindle Scribe's notebook to the competition, then it's a problem because it's not addressing, it's not current, it's not competitive. So yeah, excellent that you do like it, but there's gonna be a lot of people who are not going to like it and we can clearly see that online already. And the final question, comment from uh, Megan's Bay says, great review, thank you. However, to be fair, Amazon says that a PDF can be imported and marked up. It doesn't say that a PDF can be marked up. I disagree with that, even though that's like a semantics thing, it's not what they actually say. Because what they do say is, uh, let's find it here. Review documents and take notes digitally. Yes, that's uh, true. Use Kindle app or desktop browser to import documents. Okay, true. Now this is the part where actually is the problem. Review and mark up PDF files. It doesn't say converted documents. It doesn't say KFX files. It says specifically review and mark up PDF files. This is false clearly false because you cannot do that on a Kindle Scribe. And that's the problem that I'm talking about. And furthermore, in the bottom part, they are saying you can write directly on a page in a PDF documents. You cannot. That is not true. That's another lie that's offered as a clarification. And they're trying to explain it away as PDF documents imported through send to Kindle. That is yeah, to be mildly kind of oriented, it's misleading to say the least, because legally this is correct, because what it says is you can write directly on pages of PDF documents imported through sent to Kindle, but the wording is made in such a way that it absolutely makes people to believe that they can write on pages of PDF documents directly. When, to be fair, they are not saying that in that sentence, but that's a very, very carefully constructed sentence to make people believe that and mislead them into believing that you can actually take notes directly on PDF files when you cannot. What you can do is you can take notes in the converted documents, which is KFX files. And that's the only thing that Kindle Scribe can currently do. And this is why the second part is also provided there. Scribe does not currently support writing directly on the page in PDF documents loaded via USB-C or previously sent to the library because it's a different format and it's a PDF file. So Kindle Scribe does not support writing directly on PDF files despite their absolutely misleading attempts to make people believe that it can do what they advertised originally that it can do, but now it's coming to light that it simply can't do that. All right, that is for the Q&A number five, I believe. I hope you found it interesting, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description down below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Also, if you do like what I do and you would like to support me further, then check out the mydeepguide.com slash shop for my daily organizer 2023 to kind of provide you with 
all of your organizing, professional or personal needs for your yearly, quarterly, weekly, monthly, monthly, daily organizing needs and all that kind of stuff. Also, you can check out in the description down below the MDO playlist and see if that's a product that you might find useful or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.